Present. 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 All right. Uh, any agenda changes or requests or deletions to the agenda? Hey, any oral communications? I see our vast audience out there. Nobody is having any oral <laughs> communications. Approval of the minutes from December 19th and November 21st. Any changes or deletions or additions to the, to the meeting minutes? Uh, can we do them one by one? Sure. Okay, let's do November 21st, the oldest one first. I move. Seconded. All those in favor of approving the November 21st minutes? Aye. 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 And the December 19th minutes, any additions, deletions? Yep. Yep. I'll move um, the approval of the minutes from no December 19th. Right, motion and a second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And nays. Abstentions. Okay, motion carries. The minutes are approved. And welcome to the first meeting of 2020. <laughs> and it's February 20. Yep, <laughs> 2020. We got it all down. All right, staff comments. Thank you. So um, we, you can't tell because now it's dark, but we started the gentle washing of the trees to start removing some of the pigment. Um, so there's been a lot of interest from the community, sort of on both sides. It's been interesting. Nadia was out there on Thursday working mm -hmm. with these guys. And of course, we're going, we have to go very gently and carefully and working with the arborist, making sure that there's no distress to the trees. Um, but it's been a project that people have loved and enjoyed. And it's, uh, oh, yeah, it's San Diego. Yep. You still have to have a hand? Yes. A hand washing. Hand washing with a sponge. The part of the issue was using just straight power washing could be too much power on the bark and strip too much off. And also, um, it was going to be a massive amount of water leaving a blue lake in that DG <laughs> below. So um, because a lot of the pigment has come loose and will come off with the surface, that's actually the most effective way, actually, out of all of Nadia's testing to, um, to find the removal. <laughs> will the partial rain that we're supposed to have help a little bit? or? Um, well, the, can the problem is, because the canopy is so thick, mm -hmm. the rain doesn't really get in there as much, which yeah, is why okay. I think it remained blue yeah. so much longer. We had so many layers on it. Yeah. And because they don't lose their leaves, they're, they're fairly protected. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the other item we have under staff comments is I sent you all a link to um, a report that's going to be discussed at Council on Monday, the Board and Commission mm -hmm. update. Um, unfortunately, it's not scheduled to go on as a discussion item till about 9 o'clock at night. But I did send you the link to their um, summary report after having met with various um, commission liaisons and the questionnaire that I assume was sent to all of you as well about your service on the commission. Um, so it will be interesting to see what comes out of that discussion. Um, also, recruitment. The recruitment has begun. So I know um, four of the commissioners have terms that are uh, due to expire in May. So one of them's you. Anyway, so I'm Nia and Jim is one and Amanda Ross. So um, I'm hopefully you all will consider uh, reapplying. And uh, get get your applications in. Here's the link and everything you could possibly need. Is it just check the box or it's brand new application? It's a brand new application, but it's very similar to the one you used previously. Um, and also, we are getting ready next week to launch our summer intern recruitment. Yay! So we've shifted the summer internship so that it will. Um, basically begin with the new fiscal year in July and then run through code art so that this intern will be really primarily focused on assisting in the final preparation for, for that big event. Um, and that is all I have for staff comments. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. We've got 
a few action items to discuss tonight. Mm -hmm. and the first one is engineering services. Thank you. So, um, as you all may know, m uh, most of the larger muni projects that we have uh, are they have a large enough budget for the engineering services to be part of the overall contract. What we're running up against in mostly related to our temporary projects is we can't rely on our in-house public work staff to do a lot of the work that we need to have these placements and get all the approvals that we need. And a lot of those budgets are very limited to have the artist then manage an engineer. So what we are proposing is to have to set aside this amount of funding, which would be the maximum amount. We may only use 10,000 of it. We don't know. Um, but to have an engineer that we can work with in designing and pouring pads, evaluating art placement sites, um, you know, running calculations and things like that for us. So that's that's the primary scope for this um, for this service, and we have an open call right now. So um, hopefully, we'll have some more applications by the due date tomorrow night. And it'll be just one person to do those services for the smaller projects. Generally, they're firms, but yes. Okay. Um, and many of these firms we've worked with as subs in other projects, so they're familiar to us. They're used to the like integrating public art into construction projects. Um, which is something that we asked for specifically. But, I, I uh, think it's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, for, for some of the artists don't, don't have a clue about <laughs> things like that. So mm -hmm. this will be good for the smaller projects. Mm -hmm. uh, I, mean, I, I see Jim entering. I feel like with this sort of squarely Jim's <laughs> budgetary issues, he always... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I may have missed that, at least on the pre previous. Yes. Um, so rather than having this on call previously, you it would have gone through. It was a separate, like, sub. In, in most of our contracts, yeah. the engineer is a sub of the artist. Yeah. And sometimes we'll help them find an engineer to get through the process, but it's much cleaner since we're the ones running all the approvals through public works and, you know, through buildings or whoever else has to review them, if that engineer is working directly for us. So in theory now, any um, commission would would not include the fee that the artist would then have sub to an engineer? Just, we're or thinking primarily for temporary projects uh -huh. that we would use this. So the, our, the muni projects generally have larger budgets. Yeah. A lot of those artists are used to working with engineers, the ones who are qualified for those projects. So those we might still have the engineer on that team. Uh -huh. This is primarily for more temporary, temporary projects. And mm -hmm. it's 50000 over three years, right? Just want to make sure. Yes. Okay. And it would be up to that amount. Up As we that. said, that would be the maximum allocation. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Good evening, Jim. We're doing uh, the first action item with engineering services. Hi, it's friendly. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> the. Um, so primarily for temporary, do we have a, what's, what's the, the, if we've needed it in the past, we haven't had it, like what's the, the context? If I missed it, sorry if I'm late. It's, it's fine. Um, thanks for asking. You know, for instance, for the, um, for the pavilion <coughs> placement, we were relying a lot more on our public work staff to run a lot more numbers and calculations and solutions mm -hmm. for anchoring that piece than is really appropriate. They, they are really maxed out in their, um, in their ability to spend a lot of time helping us work on those solutions. And so we need to have somebody who's on our team to help us do that. They're maxed out for the, I mean, is it a timing thing? I, I, I think, I like, I like the idea that we're used to public work staff to do this sort of thing. And um, I don't know if it's a timing issue of like, this is a, th a, a plan for like, whether every single time we're, we're maxed out, or like how, how, help us understand how you guys are thinking about it. It's not in the scope of their work. So they just did it as a they, what they Yes, so what they can do is when we have calculations and, and um, project plans from an engineer that are completed, they will check it and make sure that it all checks out. But 
the, it's not the intention mm -hmm. that the public work staff is actually doing the work of finding the solutions and running calculations mm -hmm. for the projects. Um, and increasingly, as our projects are getting more complicated, we just need to make sure we have an engineer working for, with us to do it. And will that engineer, he brought up the point um, mm -hmm. that, will that engineer, will they be available? I mean, will we need them? And now we assume that, is that the If they're bidding for the project, they yes. should be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I mean, you know, if they're not full-time staff, I don't, I was just curious if that makes it. No, it would be a contractor, so they would be on call. Okay. Mm -hmm. So to what extent do you think that the, uh, if you're doing an installation, I mean, I think, I mean, it's interesting. I think that we're very generous in terms of the way we treat artists for doing installations mm -hmm. uh, relative to some other municipalities where it would be on the artist to foot the bill. And I'm wondering if you think about this, is it not something where an artist would just bid it as part of their job and it's sort of point specific as opposed to let's allocate funds for something that we may not need. Um, it's the idea that, hey, we're going to need it and we'd rather not just have it be lumped into the fees of the artist. That would be my preference, to lump it into the project mm -hmm. as opposed to having a separate line item for engineering. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So this is primarily for some of our smaller projects, for temporary projects, where the budget, it really isn't feasible to, to add in that much and that much more scope for the artist to have to oversee. That's something that we can do in facilitating the installation. The other thing is, as we look at other placement in other parts of the city, if we're going to have rotating temporary public art somewhere else, if we're having an artist evaluated plan for a footing, if we want to place something in a new space, they could be on call to assist us with that as well. Would it also include um, certain maintenance work? And specifically, I'm kind of thinking about that uh, statue that we had to, you know, with a lot of, um, what would you call it, marble pieces that had to kind of be, re mm -hmm. the base of which had to mm -hmm. really be redone. Mm -hmm. um, and I would imagine something like that would probably require some type of um, engineering study to make sure, to ensure the stability of the base. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in that case, a lot of that was done when the piece was installed. Got they it. had some, it, it was really a soil compaction issue mm -hmm. um, as the soil settled around the piece for mm -hmm. that particular one. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> the, the last point you made, at least, is quite appealing to me, the notion that we could have more geographic diversity in our uh, temporary public art mm -hmm. if there's an engineer on call. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but is the argument simply just that build on Jim's question too, that it would be impossible to do that, one, and two, it's becoming increasingly difficult to do any temporary public art because the public works can't do the engineering re required anymore, and so we're talking about this to, as a sort of one option of a necessary approach, and the other option being that we built it in to the commissions, mm -hmm. and that doesn't work on the scale that we're talking about in terms of commissions. Is that that That's accurate. Um, the other thing to consider is something, for instance, like Code Art 2, where we're going to have a lot of people who maybe don't have a background in public art or building these kinds of things that we need to have someone that we can consult with who has more of that background. So um, sometimes it's we're offering opportunities to artists who may not have worked in a setting where they are trying to manage an engineer in their budget and their scope. My other concern, I guess, too, is 50,000 enough. <coughs> that's my concern, too. Just, yeah. Well, I think we put this out there because it, we believe it probably is enough. <coughs> and if it is not, then we can always come back. Um, but we felt like this, this was a good trial period. Let's see what it's like to have an engineer on call for, us, for our needs and see how much of it we, we need and we use. And we may find that there are challenges with that model as well. The other thing, since you mentioned code art, would some is there money available within that we could, like within our code art budget for the engineer, as well, or is that would that be separate? Like, that's that's what this would be. That. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we be putting a line item in code art for an engineer? It's just as a cushion, or is it worth? No, I really, I, we believe that the 50000 will be sufficient okay. to get us through code art and, you know, the next few King Plaza installations yeah. or elsewhere. 
No, it's just engineers just seem so expensive. So to me, that's all. Even though this is, I know, it would be temporary part time, but I just feel like that stuff is so expensive. Mm -hmm. So that's all. I think, I think everything's expensive in the Bay Area. Um, and I, I don't know, I feel like it's adding like another, I, I realize it's something we would spend as we used it. Mm -hmm. I would rather we, no, I don't like seeing a line item for engineering. Like I just, this, this sort of rubs me the wrong way. So I, I'm not supportive. I would rather we do this as part of the projects and the regular funding that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys have a case to say, hey, you know, this is a, are, are we like, is this a new precedent we're sending? Do you have a sen sense of like, are other uh, similar bodies and other s similar size cities mm -hmm. to us allocating specifically for engineering or, or is this something that's new? Well, it's, it always has to be a budget allocation in a public art project. So our larger muni projects, the artists do break that out. And a lot of the more experienced artists that we're working with for those understand you know, how to budget that out and how much money they need to allocate for it. This is really for smaller projects and specifically someone who will understand the constraints that we have here either on the plaza or in various parts of Palo Alto that we have to find some creative solutions. Okay. My, pre my preference is to work with experienced artists that know how to do it and that would just budget it. Uh, and if not, then to just put it as a line item. So um, that's my two cents. I uh, a slightly different take, but but on the on the line item on engineering, I would just when you look at the budget quickly, I'd want it to be clear that this is actually part of how much we spend on temporary public art. Um, so there's some transparency yeah. to the person who's looking at it quickly, so it doesn't seem like the separate thing we're doing. But also to be clear, it, is it does it stand the test um, that we would be able to work with a, a more a more diverse set of artists if we did the engineering in house because we could commission artists who don't have this experience of doing lots of work. Uh, mm -hmm. it, do Absolutely. we think that's true? Yes. Uh, okay. Any other questions or comments? Here we have a motion. I move. Second. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Uh, nay. Abstain? Okay. Motion passes with one nay. Okay. All right. Thank you. The next uh, action item is a California <coughs> Avenue Public Art Master Plan. Thank you. So um, we do have in your packet um, a brief staff report and a copy of the proposal that was put in by Barbara Goldstein and Associates for the creation of a um, public art master plan for the California Avenue District. Um, as you all may recall, this was one of the priorities that was set forth in the annual retreat. Um, it's very timely since there is so much construction taking place. Um, not only with the public safety building and the garage being built there, um, but there's quite a bit of private development that's taking place along there um, and contributing to the public art fund. So it would be good to have a plan put in place, make sure it stays a pedestrian-friendly avenue of the arts, um, and the business association has really expressed a desire for more public art there. So this would help give us a framework to evaluate projects in that district. Um, and the idea is that they would put forth some various ideas about types of projects, temporary projects. Um, you know, they would do all the outreach and gather feedback, uh, make some recommendations, and uh, they're hopeful they could do this process within about five months, which would be pretty quick. Wow. Um, she has a, a great team working with her, um, and they have a wonderful group of experience. So some of the things that they talked about was having more creative outreach, sort of like we did with the main master plan we, when we had mobile arts platform go out into the community, maybe having something associated with um, the farmer's market or a public art walk to gather more input and, um, and really go to California Avenue and have those meetings there rather than expecting the people who frequent the avenue to necessarily come to City Hall to give their input. Um, so our recommendation is for uh, the approval of Barbara Goldstein and Associates uh, as the consultant for the project. The commission did previously approve the $15,000 budget for this project. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's it. 
All right, thank you. you. Have any any questions? questions or comments? Well, I think Barbara and her, uh, or the Golden Girls, <laughs> did an outstanding job on our master plan, and I look forward to working with them on the Cal Aft plan, I think. It's timely, and it, it's, uh, and it's time to start on that one. Anyway, I have a motion to approve. I move to approve. Okay. I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next item is allocation of funds for Code Arc 2. So we have a few different items here um, related to our upcoming Code Art Festival. Uh, since it, it is now late February, we are getting into high gear on this. Um, and so the item number three is related to uh, funding up to six urban interventions. Uh, we, the deadline was Friday, and we have 27 really interesting applications and we have a selection panel set to go on March 3rd I believe mm -hmm. um, to evaluate them so that's going to be really interesting discussion um, and evaluation of those projects so we will bring the top ranked projects back to you at the next meeting um, but what we're asking for at this point so that we might be able to move ahead is um, is an amount up to thirty six thousand dollars for up to six urban interventions um, each of the urban interventions has a budget up to $6,000. And another element of it that I wanted to bring forward for your consideration is um, we've had some discussions about going to uh, look for other funders to help contribute for Code Art 2. I didn't hear back from them yet, have you? <laughs> um, but I had, I had a thought, because we don't know how successful that fundraising effort may or may not be, that we consider perhaps using some of the in-lieu funds that are generated from some of the downtown projects from the public art fund up to the $36,000 limit um, here to fund the urban interventions. And in that way, we can also go forward with the messaging that it's not all just city general fund, but it's also the contributions from private development within that district um, that have contributed to it. And hopefully we will still have some great sponsors. But that was one thing that I wanted to bring forth for your consideration tonight, too. Any questions or comments? Um, actually, um, for uh, the fund uh, contributors, I was wondering if, um, since you're going to give them the recognition mm -hmm. that um, you know some of the urban interventions came from um, funds that we were able to mm -hmm. uh, reallocate. I was wondering if it also makes sense to kind of go back to the uh, the uh, parties that provided the in lieu fund mm -hmm. and see if they want to double down. <laughs> <laughs> we could try it, but you, you know what I mean. Um, okay. I, I guess I'm kind of influenced by the the NPR. Um, mm -hmm. What you call it? Um, mm -hmm. Uh, they're having a pledge drive, right. and, and they just say, from the generous contributions of, and you can say we're, you know, this so is fun. And then specifically, one, two, three person. Mm -hmm. That's a good suggestion. Thank you. Can you share some of the um, companies or individuals who've reached out to you? Just because I have, I have one in mind, but I don't know. I mean... Do you, I don't, I have to admit, I don't, haven't been in touch with this person for a while, but should I tell you and you can investigate? Why don't we touch not? base after yeah, the meeting? Okay. Yep. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? Uh, who's going to be on the panel? Ian? All right. Actually, just a, a follow up. Um, mm -hmm. Also, this, so, but in theory, the people that made in, in lieu, mm -hmm. um, they won't be recognized in the same way as those who, who say come whatever this, the sponsor the sponsors are. Is it, that's we're an interesting that question. Sort of contributed already, and that's part of the explanation of it, not using of uh, the public art of funds. Fund. Yeah, and, uh, but those those lead sponsors would get sort of the leader um, credit. Lead sponsors would, but yes. in lieu people get would get no credit except for because that's it's interesting. Part of their responsibility. Mm -hmm. And the in lieu might not want that. I mean, if we have to, you have to be careful because you don't know. 
if they really wanted to use it for yeah. that purpose. And, right? and so it's a another interesting piece to add to it is actually the in lieu contributions downtown, there's not that much. It's mostly come from different areas of town. So um, so it's a, it's a pretty modest contribution. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, that was my question. How much is in the in lieu fund? As of now, we have almost two million. All right, so thirty-six k is going to be dropping a buck. And 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 that that's um, just sort of following up on Ian's question. That that's exactly my point, which is if you have two million, depend and you could probably scrape from top who are the largest contributors, and then go to them individually and say you know, research park or whomever um, were doing this, would you like to be a name sponsor? Mm -hmm. Just to kind of elevate them from the in lieu contributor passively, mm -hmm. you know, um, participating in this program to someone mm -hmm. who's recognized. And I think it's, um, it, it's probably a, like you have a conversation starter in, mm -hmm. at least. And the money is already in lieu, so it wouldn't, it's not like this. How dare you? No, right? no, asking for additional. Oh, oh, I misunderstood that. Okay. Yeah. I so, so right now, they, it, right, right now, it's in lube money, and what I'm saying is, what, you know, obviously the team is actively approaching mm -hmm. uh, additional contributors, but I'm saying if you have a list of, let's say, top ten. You could kind of go to them and say, "By the way, did you know we're doing this, and you were so generous with the in lube fund." Mm -hmm. And would you like to be recognized and f you know for additional sponsorship or something like that? Thank you. Hey, any questions? Any other questions or comments? Um, at least, where did we? Where are we relative to budget for the for per piece from Code Art One at six thousand a piece? About the same, a little bit more, or less? Yeah, it was four thousand last <clears> time, <throat> and it was that was really a challenge for each of those teams to be able to do anything effective. Most of them ended up you know, contributing out of their own pockets. Okay. That makes sense. All right. We have a motion for Code Art 2. I just have one other quick question. Mm -hmm. Sorry, before the... It's not necessarily dealing with the amounts, but I do have a question about the um, artists. Are there any artists that participated last year that have asked to participate again? We do have, I think, two that are repeat um, is that I don't know if, I don't know if that's this has nothing obviously to do with the money <coughs> aspect but I was just curious if there's a conversation about <coughs> that like whether we really want to encourage it all has to be new every year new artists or are we encouraging um, there wasn't anything in the language of the call um, saying that you know previous uh, participants wouldn't be considered but I think that's a good conversation that the selection panel will likely have Makes sense. Thank you. And we have a motion for Code Art 2, the funds 36K. I'll approve the motion for 36,000 to six urban interventions. We have a second. I second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, the next one is Code Art 2, event coordinator, 11.5 thousand. So again, this would be the highest, um, the highest potential amount uh, because they don't know how many hours they're going to need in the months leading up to it. Um, potentially, how much extra time they may need, depending on the complexity of the urban interventions. Um, as you may recall, uh, we had a group uh, called Giant Creative who helped us last time, and so they put out. They came around with the truck, they'd put out all the sandwich boards, any of the projects that were disassembled and stored overnight. They helped the artists rehook everything up, get it up and running. They had people with walkie talkies roaming, helping um, anyone who needed inf information, volunteers who showed up, um, all of that. And then at the end of the night, they would go to each site with a box truck, load up all of the pieces and the sandwich boards, store them overnight. Um, they also sourced security for us for a couple of pieces that were um, too big to really be able to move at night but needed to be uh, protected, uh, whether it was for the artwork's protection or the public's protection so they don't climb on it. Um, so this, uh, this would be for that kind of 
assistance leading up to it. So they would source all of any equipment rentals that we would need, deliver them to the site, um, and sort of be boots on the ground assistance and communications with all of the artist teams. And they do tend to work pretty intensively in the weeks leading up to it also. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments? Are you looking at Giant again? Yes, we've had conversations with Giant, which is where we generated this number. Okay. What was uh, the number from last time? No, it was comparable. It was, but we, we had put some other things in their scope that we're going to do and utilize interns for. Um, but I think last year it was slightly higher. It was uh, in the ballpark of 17,000. Yeah. So it was a higher number last time, but we but cut some more. things out of the scope. Okay. Well, Giant's very good. I know the owner, uh, Chris mm -hmm. Esparza, so mm -hmm. very good company. Any other questions or comments? Hey, I have a motion. I move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Thank you. Motion passes. Mm -hmm. And the fifth and final, the collection maintenance. I'm going to let Nadi field this one. You've heard enough out of me. Take over. <laughs> Hello. Let me pull some images. Greg Brown. Beloved Greg Brown. So the mural uh, which is on the agenda today is actually just across the street, um, well, a couple blocks away. Um, so um, Boy Fishing was um, painted by Greg Brown in 1975 when um, he was hired by the city as um, the city's first artist in residence. Um, and Greg created um, the, um, the series of um, murals downtown. So uh, created originally in 1975, uh, the mural is located on the um, uh, facade wall of the um, US um, post office building. It's a historic building. The building was constructed um, in 1932, and it is owned by um, um, United States uh, Postal Services. Um, over the uh, so the last time that the artist was able to work on the mural was in 2002. Since then, the um, old building has been uh, deter deteriorating quite a bit. Um, there were <coughs> problems uh, with um, the. Uh, um, so the rain, like the drain um, on the roof, so the walls were um, getting wet. As a result, the stock was suffering, and of course, it affected um, the mural quite a bit. Um, we had um, a conservation, a fine uh, conservation company, um, a firm um, doing um, a survey back in 2015. So back then, it was. This artwork was determined um, to be one of the priorities um, in terms of our conservation. So as you recall, we had um, conversations on how we can um, save the murals, perhaps um, in a different realm. So we did a series of um, digital photographs um, to preserve the murals sort of um, in, that, um, in that sphere. Uh, but um, early this year, um, the building uh, underwent um, a comprehensive um, repainting project. Um, so we jump on that opportunity. The contract painter did quite a great job um, uh, fixing the stucco around the mural. They were very careful not to in paint or touch up. Um, the artwork. Um, so uh, we, uh, at that point, um, we contacted um, a fine conservation um, firm, um, group whom we worked with in the past, uh, to come um, to Palo Alto and evaluate the current um, condition of the artwork and um, provide us with a treatment proposal. So this treatment proposal is attached to the staff report. And um, today we are asking, uh, we're recommending that the um, commission um, approves funding for the um, conservation treatment um, proposed uh, by Preservation Arts. 
Hey, thank you. Do you want to say something about how they address the wall and the water issue so that that's been corrected? Oh, yes, absolutely. That's a very good point. Um, so uh, not just um, the uh, the walls um, were repainted, but also um, during that project, you can see sort of like the, um, the mark from the removed um, water pipe. Right. So everything. So uh, that infrastructure is um, being replaced, which will, um, you know, prevent um, the mural from, you know, being um, damaged by the dripping water. And in that sense, you know, it really makes sense um, to invest in this conservation project and really prolong the uh, lifespan yeah. of this, you know, beloved artwork. All right. Good. Thank you. Any questions or comments? I do. I actually have a comment. So the recommendation is for approval in the amount of eighty-eight thousand. I mean, eighty-eight hundred and ten dollars. Up to um, mm -hmm. when you is it? Yeah. So that that was the thing. I think it's like probably up to the amount because the treatment proposal says mm -hmm. the total is sixty-six forty-eight to. Yes. Yeah, uh, so they provided a range, yeah. um, which is a common practice with treatments like yeah. that, um, based on the uh, needed amount of time and specialists on site. So. Um, yeah, so my only comment turn, turn it back is, on. So my only comment is maybe just um, to clarify it's up to that amount rather okay. than in the amount of. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. See, this Are is much more substantial than what we had Morgan do because it's the nature of the work. Absolutely. When Morgan Bricka um, um, worked on one of the other um, murals in downtown Lady Watering, so if she really, um, so there was, um, I think there was a vandalism uh, that took just uh, the, the face of the, um, the woman uh, portrait was vandalized and um, Morgan, we invited, we asked if Morgan could uh, come on set and just do some touch-ups, which she did out of uh, respect um, for the artist. Um, this is really a conservation type of project but because they'll be working not just with the loss of um, paint, right, but also just um, stabilizing that stucco underneath uh, the mural and also just stabilizing the two different layers of acrylic paint that the artist used originally in, 2000, in uh, 1975 and 2002. There's some separation going on. I was actually thinking of the Cal Avenue Tunnel, uh, but this is a much more, this is a very different kind of piece. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's so crazy to think what, Greg Brown was probably paid like $2,000 to do like 20 pieces in 1975, yeah. and it's like eight, nine grand to do one. Uh, I think this looks fine. I think there's a little arithmetic thing, it's a sort of nitpicky thing about their mileage. I think they underestimated the miles. Um, but uh, this this seems like it's, it's, it's worth doing. and. Um, was, did you guys put this out to bid, or just, just was this uh, one firm that you guys we like and that yes. Yeah, so um, we reached out to this specific group because it was the uh, conservation team that worked on the triptych on Calav, okay. and it's it, um, they did an exceptional job on you know beyond actually the original like proposed scope, mm -hmm. and also it's it's quite hard to find local specialists who would be willing to work on outdoors murals. So these folks are from like way out in the East Bay somewhere? Um, Oakland, oh, presently, Oakland. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So my question is, I'm all for this, but um, what are we, we kind of talked about the other, the murals as a whole, and I was just curious, what is our, what, where are we now <laughs> with those? Because I'm wondering, are there other murals that might need work too, and would this be a good time to do them all at once? or? Should we be thinking about that or just one at a time? Do you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. Um, well, this one, the opportunity presented itself because they were doing the painting on the building and resolving the water issue. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the challenge in working on these projects is they're not city-owned buildings. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we're monitoring the projects, but, um, but unless there's a situation that really needs to be addressed, we're less likely to step in. Um, but they're, you know, they're, they're definitely beloved, and this is one that um, is in particular need of, of some assistance at this time. And unfortunately, other cities have had murals, <coughs> privately owned building, buildings just painted over, mm. completely painted over, and it's just a treasure that was 
was lost. Mm -hmm. um, my one question is the the window treatments up there are they are they part of the mural? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that is a it's it's a painted window next to a real window. So if you go back to the previous one, I think you can see both. Okay, yeah. So here's the real window that's masked for painting, and this is all painted. <coughs> all right. That's so great. <laughs> it's really amazing how many people um, did not notice that. Yeah. So like that really is pointed out. I think there was one of the comments on social media that someone just was surprised that's that, so oh great. my god, that's it. Well, that's a sun side of the building too, isn't it? That gets the bulk of the sun during the day, plus uh, any weather that comes in hits that wall pretty well. Too. It does, and there's a, there's a large tree adjacent to it that I think has been in kind of ill health. It was in the, the press. There was a local group trying to help save this tree, um, but I think perhaps the tree canopy wasn't giving it as much shade mm -hmm. in the last couple years. Right, any other questions or comments? Hey, yeah, I do, I do want to sorry one more thing. Mm -hmm. I do want to go ahead with this, but am I going to go back again to say are there other pieces that maybe this might be a good time to look at expanding? Well, I think uh, that's a discussion, an item, uh, something that yeah. we come up for in the next meeting. But the only thing is maybe you know would it help in the long term financially? I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. But if they're already coming, you know, out here, would it help? So what I'm hearing is that because these uh, murals are on private property, so we're uh, approaching it in one of two ways. One, if there's an urgent need, mm -hmm. then you have an emergency situation, then you probably do the extra work of trying to broker mm -hmm. uh, the fix with the private owner. Or mm -hmm. the second approach is if they're doing something, then we try to uh, attend to the maintenance opportunistically. Mm -hmm. That's, I think that's an accurate summary. Um, yeah, I, I think that's fine. Hey, can we have a motion? I move You're to approve. <laughs> <laughs> I move to approve. Okay, I have a second. <clears throat> I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, uh, oppose? Abstention? All right, thank you. Motion passes. And we have made it through the agenda. Any announcements? Okay, next meeting is March 19th. Oh my God, St. Patrick's Day already. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you all very much. Meeting Thanks, is adjourned. Guys. Thank you, welcome back. Happy New Year, guys. Yeah, Happy New Year.